Okay. So today we're going to do this really fun thing called shadow work. Why? Because we want to be authentic. We want to nourish and grow our power. And I thank every single one of you for being here today. You know, you guys light up my world. I am a trauma-informed licensed acupuncturist and energy healer. So the question really is, Winnie, if you're an acupuncturist, why do you want to talk about shadow work? The short answer is because the body keeps a score, right? So a lot of the times my clients have vision problems, hearing problems, lower back pain, and you wouldn't believe it, but some of this comes from anger and fear, grief, shame, unworthiness. So when we have these shadows in our body, it actually turns into diseases. And so rather than, you know, I have finite capacity, how many patients I can see a week, is to teach a course and a free masterclass. So all of us can do this work together. So what I really specialize in as an acupuncturist is releasing trapped emotions in the physical body. So organs and meridians. And I really enjoy taking all of you on a deep dive. And if you close your eyes, that's the highest compliment you can give me because if you close your eyes, it means you trust me. As it turns out, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever been to a yoga class, right? The yoga teacher often teaches a mixed level class, right? Sometimes the teacher says down dog and you don't need to look at the teacher and you can do a down dog. So don't worry about any of the slides that's, uh, I have prepared and don't even worry about the words that is coming out of my mouth. If you already do down dog, you can just go deep inside your body because as it turns out, whatever is saying coming out of my mouth, these words, it's only 20% of my communication. 80% of what I'm trying to offer today is the vibration of unconditional love, unconditional acceptance, and unconditional compassion for all of our shadow. So if you do this entire class with eyes closed, great, perfect. And today we're all going to be self healers. Tao Te Ching is one of my favorite books in the world. And it says, knowing others is intelligence, right? How often do we go on social media or we read an article and we'll judge the other person, whether they're good at what they do or they're not good at what they do. But knowing yourself, that is true wisdom because it's not so hard, sorry, not so easy to know the truth of who you are. Whether you feel like, oh, I don't, I'm not good at this, or I don't really know my true power, you know, knowing yourself, that's true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. And what does this look like? Okay, I'm your boss, I'm your mom, I tell you and you have to obey, okay? Getting other people to do what we want them to do, that is just strength. If you don't obey, I won't give you a paycheck. If you don't obey me, then I won't feed you. Okay, that's mastering others. Mastering yourself, that is true power. So this is a $10 million question. Do you dread being triggered? Okay, I guess I have to move this guy. Oh, perfect. And what triggers you the most? You know, uh, one of my beloved clients, she texted me today. She said, Winnie, I don't know what's wrong with me. I keep dating these guys that don't respect my boundaries. I tell them no, and I feel like they just want to kiss me. And I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, 
how come I keep dating the same guys? And I thought to myself, okay, this topic of setting boundaries, you know, it seems to be a buzzword. Is set, setting boundaries good or bad? And what I have come to conclusion about this is it depends on the intention when you're setting the boundary. You know, if the other person is angry and I'm angry, and I've done this a number of times with my mom or my boyfriend, okay, we're talking on the phone, I don't like what they're saying, I wanna hang up the phone, right? So if at that moment I hang up the phone, I'm setting a boundary, but notice I am doing it out of anger. I'm triggered, right? So whether I'm the one who's hanging up the phone or the other person's hanging up the phone on me, the other person might feel abandoned, rejected, discarded. I'm not done talking. And then you just cut me off. So here's the secret is that we are all connected beyond our comprehension, right? So as a healer, when I channel healing energy for you, it's good for me and it's good for you. Mm -hmm. When I hang up the phone on my mom, which I've done a number of times, <laughs> it doesn't feel good for her. It also doesn't feel good for me because I can't hurt my mom or disconnect from my mom without also hurting myself and disconnecting from myself. So then you ask Winnie, what is a healthy way of setting boundaries? The healthy way of setting boundaries is when we come from a stable nervous system, right? When we're coming out of meditation and we're like, well, what is my sole purpose? What am I here on this earth to do? And if that person is in alignment with my sole purpose, then I want to spend time with them. And if this person is not in alignment with my sole purpose, then I don't need to spend time with them. So when you set boundaries out of anger, chances are you're disconnecting from yourself and the other person at the same time. And if you set boundaries from a place of coming out of meditation and really vibrating your sole purpose, then setting boundaries is the most beautiful thing. So um, I welcome you to take out your cell phone, to take any pictures of the slides, take any screenshots you like, because I fundamentally believe that healing is should be available to everybody regardless of your income level. So whether or not you can afford my courses, please take as many notes as possible because maybe you don't need to take my course if you just read all the books that I tell you about. So this is one of my favorite book. It's called The Science of Enlightenment. It's written by Shinzen Yong. And he, in the book, he talks about these four mathematical equations. And being an MIT nerd, when I see equations, I get super excited. Okay, so two of the equations teaches us how to use trigger as an opportunity to awaken. The first equation says pain times resistance equals suffering. So for example, last night, um, I had a lot of anger with something that I do because I made a mistake and, you know, my friend showed up and uh, there was a miscommunication in texting and I was really upset with myself. And what does resistance look like, right? Because I think we've all had that moment when, ah, I'm trying to get out the door and I can't find my cell phone or, ah, I'm late to my meeting, but where are my car keys, right? In that moment, well, we're really frustrated. If we judge ourselves, be like, oh my God, Winnie, you can't ever keep track of your cell phone or your keys. Right. If I meet my frustration with resistance, that's going to lead to suffering. Big resistance, big suffering. Right. If you love the equation, big resistance, big suffering. But there's another choice. 
And this word is called equanimity, is a Buddhist concept. Equanimity is where we bring radical acceptance, total acceptance of the present moment of what is. Okay, so I'm in the middle of frustration. I'm like, where are my car keys? Where's my cell phone? Can I accept the perfection of the current moment? Can I accept that I'm frustrated? Can I accept that I'm judging myself? Can I accept everything that's coming up right now? And if I practice equanimity, it leads to purification. And that is, in summary, what shadow work is. We want to identify the shadow and purify. So how do we know and master ourselves? Carl Jung, who is a Swiss psychoanalyst, and we can call him the father of shadow work in the psychology world, he says, how can I be substantial if I do not cast a shadow? Right? If I'm standing in the sun, I'm going to have a shadow. I must have a dark side also if I am to be whole. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about before shadow work, what I look like. Before I did shadow work, I was a cold-hearted, grudge-holding, self-suppressing, fearful, arrogant, unworthy, competitive, and judgmental, conflict-creating, scarcity survival mindset. What's that dismiss? Dismiss. Oh. Sorry. Let me see what's going on. Yes. That has been my problem for three years. Thank you. Yes. So I was disconnected from my gifts. I was, yes, manipulative and shameful and unconscious, right? So now I can laugh about it because, you know, I, and I still have these things coming up from time to time. But when the fear comes up, when the frustration comes up, I get to hold myself like a newborn baby because, you know, when the shadow comes up, it's really just asking for more love. So I want to share this picture. Um, this was my journey. Uh, 2015 was the picture on the left. I was a powerless victim. <sighs> yes. And today, hopefully, we can journey into being authentic queen, all of us, and kings. So I wrote a book called Honoring Darkness, Embrace Shadow Work, to nourish and grow your power. If you're in person, you can buy a copy of this book or you can um, read it on Amazon. But really, you know, the benefit of doing this work is you can own and appreciate. You know, I believe that God didn't do any mistakes when he designed us, right? So whatever feature that God gave me, it's also my gift. So my weakness is also my strength. And so reading this book helps us realize that all of our deepest wounds can also be turned into power. Yes. So Pema Chodron says this about owning our darkness. Only when we know our own darkness well can we be present with the darkness of others. Mm. Compassion becomes real when we recognize our shared humanity. This is so powerful. I'm gonna read it one more time and just allow this, close your eyes like a magic spell, like downloading this into your vibrational field. So close your eyes. Only when we know our own darkness well, can we be present with the darkness of others? Compassion becomes real when we recognize our shared humanity and take a deep breath, really sink in this compassion and breathe it out. Perfect. 
All right. So I'm going to give a moment. Um, anybody in person can come up and share. What is your greatest darkness? People online, I welcome you to type into the chat. What is the current darkness you're facing? What is relationship with your darkness? Okay, um, anybody in person want to share any darkness that they're dealing with? And it's okay if not, maybe we can keep it private. You, you wanna share? Yep, please come up if you like. <laughs> uh, I'm John, as you can tell from my name tag. Um, I'm publishing a book and the darkness is that every day I think, oh, something's gonna go wrong. There's a, gonna be a typo, I'm gonna make a mistake. It's, you know, something's gonna go wrong, so. Um, it's a good thing to be publishing a book, but it's a lot of stress and I feel a lot of anxiety about it. Can I give you a hug? Thank you, John. And thank you for him for sharing because I spent the last 24 hours, you know, I only do this free masterclass four times a year and I have the same thing. I'm like, what can go wrong, right? How very common. All right, let's read a comment from our chat. Okay, my present darkness is being judgmental with myself due to my balance disorder. Perfect, yes. Oh my God. So let's talk about judgment because I'm self-proclaimed queen of judgment. <laughs> I'm going to take a moment and breathe compassion to myself because there's so much ancestral karma around this, okay? Um, I bless my mom. I love her so much, but She's also one of the most judgmental person I know. So get, guess where I inherited from? <laughs> and I think that it comes from the lineage, right? We came from famine, World War II, Great Depression, you know, slavery, all of these things. And we relied on judgment to survive, right? So all of us, you know, why do we have this hypervigilant fight, flight, freeze, and fawn is because we want to survive. So then you're like, Winnie, well, why would I want to turn off my judgmental because it's going to help me survive? And the answer is because our ancestors were disconnected from the spiritual world. Uh, when we don't have help in the spiritual realm, we think, I gotta do it all by myself. I think it's me against you. There's $10, okay? Either you get the $10 or I get the $10, okay? Who's the first person to grab the $10? But when we're connected to the spiritual realm, we understand that we are actually one. We're actually connected beyond our comprehension, right? What if there is enough for everybody? Okay, we're gonna read one more comment or maybe a couple of comments, okay? So um, I'm so hard on myself because I feel allowed this to happen when I could have been prevented. Yes, exactly. So we are our worst bully, we judge ourselves harsher than anybody else in the world it's like okay i don't live with my mom anymore but my mom still lives in my psyche so i'm still running that tape of judging myself and another comment um yes jason says i'm my worst critic and prevents me from social growth and progress yes um oh this is a good one davis shares that he is always doing and giving and giving and giving and not really matching the energy in the exchange. So how many people here are current or former people, please are where they feel like they give and give and give and then it's not reciprocated. <laughs> okay, like majority of people here. Um, yeah, so see, that's why we need community because when one person shares, we really realize how common it is. Um, my darkness is fixating on all the ways I've failed in the past and fearing that my past self will affect 
my future. Thank you, Bianca. I do this all the time. So, you know, unfortunately in society, we have sentences like once a cheater, always a cheater, right? We give people roles, labels. It's like, once I have cancer, I always have cancer or, you know, whatever label that we're given, then we seem to be stuck with that label, whether the label is, you know, cancer or a cheater. And see, that is also because we're disconnected from the spiritual realm, right? When we are struggling in the human realm, when we get a label, we think that is who we are. We think that's it, cancer, death sentence. Okay, cheater, death sentence. I am screwed. I have negative relationship karma forever and ever. I'm never gonna find emotional intimacy. False. So let me move on. Thank you everybody for your comments because what is complete self-mastery? In one sentence, actually there's nothing for me to teach you because each and every one of you is already a self master okay so it's me my ego and then my self master you can call my higher self my original soul so how do we remove the blockage so that i can have access to my self master okay so there's this concept a lot of us are really afraid of waste you know animal feces rotten bananas but actually it's when we decompose that we get new growth death needs to rebirth failure leads to success one of our comment is i'm so afraid that the mistakes of my past is going to affect my success in the future but when we learn how to recycle failure turns into success so let's do it and this technology is divine feminine. Okay, think about it. Most of us breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. Mother Earth has the ability to take carbon dioxide and turn it back to oxygen. So what if, and by the way, divine feminine exists in both men and women, we can turn on this innate recycling factory so we can transform our darkness into light. Okay, so Technohan wrote a book called No Mud, No Lotus. And I just absolutely love this card. Okay, again, close your eyes and receive this like a magic spell download into your vibrational field. Just close your eyes. Receptivity represents the feminine. After having absorbed everything to fullness, she is endlessly emptying herself, overflowing and receiving more. Be grateful for whatever life offers without any expectations or demands. No mission, quality or reward is important. Dissolve all obstacles that separate us and the community, right? So what we're gonna cover today is shadow work, the 10 grit of shadow and have a little magic. Swan is here with us today to leave a little movement exercise. So what is shadow work? Okay, Carl Jung says, the most terrifying thing is to accept oneself completely. People will do anything to avoid facing their own souls, right? So here's a picture of Carl Jung, right? Do we have the courage to face the deepest, darkest parts of our soul that we have learned to suppress? And in fact, my parents have suppressed because I don't want to look at that. I don't want a screaming child. But it is when we look at our shadow that we become whole. So we're going to do this at two levels. One is at the mind level, right? So that's journaling. That's applying some of these techniques that you learn on these slides. And the other way is meditation, prayer, and contemplation. 
So all things are made of yin and yang. And as an acupuncturist, this is my bread and butter, right? I'm always balancing this. So yin is feminine, dark, water, moon, mother earth, rest, be, receive, content, utilize what's in front of us. Yang is masculine. It's the light, fire, the sun, father, sky, heaven is pushing forward. Do, 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 give, 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 innovate, build, provide, to protect. Okay. So looking at this, you know, we've had thousands of years of patriarchy. So we've suppressed the yin and preferred the yang. Okay. This is kind of funny, but are men better than women? Okay. Is fire better than water? Is working better than playing? So if we look at the Tao symbol, we really understand that, you know, we have light and dark. And I'm going to skip this because uh, if you're interested, I'm going to make more videos on this. But there are these yin yang laws that basically explain that the more we are embracing our shadow the more light we can shine okay yeah take a look at this, this take a picture take of it picture. And ask me questions want to really give Swan more chance to uh, experience her magic okay so when we apply the yin yang laws to shadow work our deepest shadow turn into our brightest light and our deepest pain turn into the greatest pleasure so now um, I am just gonna have you lead some exercises. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So let me see. Stop, share, and okay. So we're gonna do a little exercise. Just give us a moment to adjust the cameras. I'll stand next to you. I'll adjust the camera for you. All right. Well, uh, thank you. This is the microphone. Hi, everybody. I'm Swan. I hope you all can hear me. Um, hi. hi. So thank you, Winnie, for this chance to share with everybody. Uh, can you all hear me? Uh, that should be okay. Okay, great. So I wanted to share with you a uh, kinetic voice or Kivo today, which is a... Um, embodied spiritual practice that um, uses the voice and dance very very uncomplicated dance steps help connect us into our chakras for healing purposes so there's a lot of yin yang or ida and pingala involved in the body and the chakra system that all come up with the left being the feminine that receptive side and the right being the masculine that come together at the root chakra and then spiral up through our bodies and out through the crown with that connection between earth and sky meeting within our own bodies. So recently I taught the root chakra and today I wanted to work on the sacral chakra for you all. So you can find that sacral chakra just above the root. I wanna invite you all to place your hands on your low abdomen. And close your eyes if that feels safe to you. Take an inhale down into your lower diaphragm. Exhale. Feel the ground underneath your feet. Rooting to rise. Take another deep inhale. Maybe connect with the color orange with your inner eye. And exhale. We are going to bathe ourselves in the sound of awe. Let me release your hands from your lower abdomen. Take an inhale and sweep your arms overhead. 
And then like rain, open your mouth nice and wide and bring the hands down as you say, ah. Inhale again, one more. Oh. If you are touching Mother Earth, connect through your feet, soften through your legs, grounding through the tailbone, roll vertebrae by vertebrae to restack your spine. So I'm going to sit down and play the Shruti box for you and teach you a vocal bowl. So it's not a chant so, so much as a vocal bowl. It's the creator is Liz Addison and she's deeply rooted in many spiritual traditions and have degrees of SMO musicology and through some self-healing that she worked with created this kinetic voice program. So the chant is um a ya so just like we did that ah sound it's a little bit more of a closed with the a sound a you can drop your chin just a little bit and then ya with the big open ah sound so let's try it one more time a a thank you ya ya all right so it's very simple. I'm going to play the Shruti. And Winnie, I'm going to try to make sure I go quickly enough. I wasn't paying any attention to time. Don't worry. You're perfect. We are all perfect. And there's an uh, Indian um, instrument called the Shruti box. And so I'm going to play a drone underneath. I hope you all can hear it OK at home. And we are going to be able to see a uh, right on top of that with some slight easy variations and then I'll teach you some stuff. The D major is curious. You want to close your eyes and really listen in. With your call and response. attunement and that alignment. And this chakra is associated with creativity, 
fecundity, sexuality, create and desire. So these things that can be very quickening and without these things, life can be very dull, right? So it's really important for us to be able to continue to root <laughs> into that creativity, that spark that makes us all unique, right? Being true to our own hearts desires. So I'm gonna put this just to the side. I'm gonna try to use this rattle um, for us to keep some time. So I'm gonna try to do that. And that again, it's a six eight time, so it's a, like a waltz. So I'm gonna invite you all to come to stand. And if you're at home, you can stand as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So maybe you can start to feel a little like a shaking marble. So it's a little bit of a pull right down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe you can a little walk with me. All right, so that was pretty simple, right? So I love it when I'm going to like a, my cousin, he's half Greek, and she's like, we're going to do a dance. And I'm like, okay. And it's like this, right? I, I, I can do that, right? Otherwise, I might get a little nervous. So it's very simple. The next one's called the Beehive. Again, with that B. So we're going to pretend that we're making a big circle. So you don't want to move those hips all around. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you guys all got that. So you can feel as if you're moving around that sacral chakra. Feel nice. And grounded feet are slightly wider than the armpit, soft bend in those knees. Now we're going to take it in a different direction. So we're going to do like a stair. So we're going to go up through the toes and down. Again, really rooting and feeling the sensation in your sacral chakra. Yeah, it's okay. So that's three steps that you got down. Everyone was able to follow along. The next one is a little bit more vigorous. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, like sweeping and clearing, whatever you to get cleared. There's no mistakes, right? Okay, perfect. And lastly, it's just going to be step together. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I'm finding a hard time doing it all the same time. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Everyone take a big breath in. Now we're just going to play all together. Okay, so we'll just take a couple of minutes. I'm going to play this rattle and do our timing. You want me to do the time? Yes, please. I love the participation. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so it's just that simple. And we're going to start with that shaking marble. So we'll start here and then maybe we can make our own little figure eight, right? And I'm sorry, that's the other one. Let me start over. Inhale and exhale and go. Mind your behavior. 
Inhale, stretch those arms all the way up. And exhale, come all the way through your central channel, coming to a rest at your heart state. Mm. Bow your head to the heart. Thank you for the help with the rally. Thank you. My goodness, that was perfect. So, please tell everybody if we love what you do, how can we follow you? You know, tell us about any of your classes, et cetera. Oh, well, thank you, Lenny. Yeah, so um, I'm on well, Instagram at Swan Movement Arts and I have a website that I'm updating right now. <laughs> and I'm teaching at the Wellness of Oz uh, Yoga and Meditation Studio in Burbank. Um, so I'd love to see you there and I'll let I'll try to keep it up for us all so week. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Isn't she great? Okay, a round of applause, everybody. Yay, yay, yay. All right. So Hi morning. Winnie. Can okay. you could you put that in the chat so we can follow her? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. That was such a wonderful exercise. Can you do higher? Okay, perfect. That's good. Yeah, good. All right, the fun continues. Okay, so share screen. All right, that was the most delicious break ever. And now we're back to talking about shadows. I love Carl Jung, so it's full of Carl Jung quotes. Your visions will become clear only when you can look into your heart. Who looks outside? Dreams. Who looks inside? Awakens. Ooh, that gives me chills. So I'm a student of Master Shah. He teaches the Tenda. And the tenda is love, 
forgiveness, mm -hmm. compassion, light, humility, harmony, flourishing, gratitude, service, and enlightenment. This is everything we want. And when we want to manifest, whether we want to manifest healthy body, intimate relationships, or, you know, finances, when we align with these tenda, then everything just becomes instant. Now, unfortunately, what we have every day is these things that our ego create for us, okay? So we have grief, anger, suppression, fear, unworthiness or arrogance, conflict causing, lack of mentality, taking for granted, manipulation and shame. So exactly there is 10 because I'm a professor and I love creating these curriculum. So this is, you know, the journey that we get to take if you decide to take the course or you can just buy the book and do the exercises at the end of every chapter. You know, what I find is sometimes you go to a talk therapist to talk about your shadow. But then sometimes 20 years later, you're still with a talk therapist, you know? So what if my science brain, engineer brain says, what if I created some structure around shadow work where, you know, there's a curriculum, you follow this, and then you systematically look at everything. So, you know, take a picture of this slide, you're welcome. And, um, I'm going to give you a bunch of resources so you can do this for free also. So I'm going to focus on the sixth conflict because the, the shadow and the light is conflict versus harmony, right? So in this world, we have wars. Okay, um, many parts of our world, people's houses are being burned. And we have mass shootings in this country. We have domestic violence, physical, verbal, and sexual abuse. When we get triggered by the external environment, it's because we also have this unresolved inside. You know, this is something we take from Chinese medicine, which basically says inside our body is a small cosmo. So whatever, let's say one country invades another country or somebody physically, verbally, or sexually abuse another person. This bully victim relationship also is played out inside our internal organs, which is why all of us do this work. It's going to bring us the best health, best relationship, and it's also going to make the world a better place. So the question is, forget about everything outside. Just close your eyes and look inside. Are you at war or in harmony with yourself? <laughs> More often than not, our conflicts is between our brain and our heart. There's this harmony between our fears and also our love. We want to be carefree, liberated and have freedom. But then there's a part of us that wants to be protected, comforted, and be small. So what are we going to do about these things? Teo Swan says, pain cannot be healed by hating yourself. It can only be healed by loving yourself. Okay, it seems obvious, but how often are we angry about being angry, scared about being scared, stressed about being stressed, tired of being tired, feel conflicted about having conflicts, right? So you know why there's a multiplier effect? It's like angry squared. Okay, I'm getting really mathematically nerdy, but it's because our thinking mind keeps generating the thought that creates the chemicals that create the anger, the fear, the stress. So the shortcut is to set boundaries with our own thinking mind. 
being whole is to love, accept, and release our shadow so that we can be at peace internally and we can start to vibrate that into the world. So I love this circle calligraphy. You can see in person here, I also have one. This circle represents Wu Wei, doing, not doing, or effortless doing, is this Taoist concept where the master does nothing, yet nothing is left undone, right? So, you know, this circle reminds us impermanence, right? Day is followed by night, and night is followed by day. New moon is followed by full moon and full moon is followed by new moon, right? So we're not stuck with a cis. We're not stuck with bad relationship karma or bad financial karma, right? It's just our thought that gets stuck. And every single moment, we have an opportunity to change our karma, right? So let's keep going. The benefits of shadow work. What you resist persons. Kindness is choosing mercy over righteousness. So whenever some of the darkness comes up, listen, and be aware. How do you talk to yourself? Do you judge yourself harshly, beat yourself up? Or maybe you run away and hide, you know, because now is not a good time. <laughs> Ah, when we integrate shadow with compassion, the darkness in me sees the darkness in others. So for example, when somebody gets really angry, instead of me getting triggered, if I have met the monster or the anger inside me, instead of judging the other person, for being an angry person. I get to have compassion for the other person being angry. So when we do this shadow work, we're no longer afraid of the darkness that comes up in the world, the workplace, in our boyfriend, girlfriend, mother-child relationship. So let's open our heart to love, intimacy, and abundance. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what I really hope that everybody gets out of this class in one word is trust, right? Because, okay, okay, Winnie, you talk about equanimity, but you know, what if the world is on fire? Like, what are we going to do, right? Can we trust that everything unfolds in perfection? Everything instead of I'm a victim, things happen to me. Why me, why, why, why me, me, me? Is everything happens for me, right? So then you're like, oh, wait, 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 but the building might be burning down. What am I gonna do? What if somebody takes advantage of me? Okay, is that a scam? Is he trying to take money from me? Okay, what if I, you know, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> a bird sitting on a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking. Not because the branch doesn't break. Oh no, we don't have to trust that the branch doesn't break. It's because it trusts its own wings to fly, right? So the bird can actually close the eyes and relax on the branch. <sighs> because I don't care if the branch breaks. I count my own wings, okay? So that is authentic power. I don't know like what's going to happen in the world, but I trust me, okay? I trust me because I'm connected, hopefully to the spiritual realm and I, I got backups, okay? I can call my backups. So who do you live for? I'm going to tell you, I spend many lives living for my parents, okay? My parents want me to do this, I do this. I spent my life trying to be the best daughter, the best wife, the best mom. 
And unfortunately, when I try to do that, I'm just living my life for other people. And when I force myself to be something I'm not, I dim my own source power. Okay, so what is our source power? Shadow work is awakening. My beloved spiritual mother, uh, Dr. B. Raven Lee, please take a picture of this. This is the most important book ever. It's called Unbinding the Soul, Awakening Through Crisis with Compassion. Because... It is when we go through a divorce. It is when we hit rock bottom. You know, we have these autoimmune diseases, cancer. It is when we think that the world is in complete darkness, our greatest pain that we grow the wings, right? So when we come in contact with the crisis, Compassion leads to forgiveness, which leads to liberation, and it leads to authentic power. The only way out is through, right? Nobody can take your pain away from you, but you. And getting unstuck is about loosening our attachment to our roles, stories, and labels. And I'm going to share a quick story because one of our community members shared that I have a lot of regret with the things that I've done in the past. And I'm going to share that, you know, before my awakening, I was parenting from an unconscious uh, way, unfortunately. So all the fear, guilt, and shame that my mother fed me like candy, unfortunately, I also fed that to my children like candy. And for a long, long time, I punished myself holding on to the shame of being a bad mom, right? What I have to do or get to do is delete the label of being a bad mom, delete the shame and know that, you know, if you put 10 women in my shoes, 10 women would have behaved the same way because this is ancestral karma, right? How can I have done better? That's the way my grandmother mothered my mother, my mother mothered me, right? I just couldn't have done better. And so when I stopped looking at my daughter for validation, like needing her to love me, appreciate me, or stop blaming myself, that is when we really become powerful. Okay, so now I'm gonna offer everybody a blessing. So my teacher, um, Dao, Taoist master, doctor and master Ji Gang Sha, he offers these Dao calligraphy and is extremely powerful. You know, one of his students has stage four liver cancer, is too advanced to even do chemotherapy. And she traced the calligraphy for two months every day for hours. And, you know, after two months, it was reduced down to a dot. After nine months, totally gone. Okay, so today I'm going to offer everybody a blessing. And the blessing that I'm offering today, I'm going to show you the picture. Okay, and I'm going to explain what this mantra says. Basically, this is the book of magic spells. <laughs> is Develop soul, heart, mind, body, wisdom, and intelligence. The soul is the boss, right? So when we talk about karma cleansing, the soul is like the operating system in our iPhone, okay? If your iPhone has bugs in the software, it's going to crash. So when we get these calligraphy blessing or when you chant mantras on your own, we're actually karma cleansing. We're actually updating the software bugs so that we have a better operating system. So so is the boss that hosts this karma or you can call it database. And that gives the information to the heart. And then the heart 
gifts information to the mind, right? So remember I said that the thinking mind keeps creating, out multiplying the anger, the grief, the shame. So the answer is to get it from the soul realm. So if you would like to receive this blessing, please uncross your legs and have the legs 90 degrees and um, sit up with a tall spine. Close your eyes and put one hand on the heart and one hand on the lower abdomen. Dear all of my treasures, please turn on. Silent invocation connecting to the source and all my heavens teams. Really love you, honor you and appreciate you. We cannot thank you enough. Please forgive us for all the negative information we have given to others. We unconditionally forgive anyone who has given us negative information. At this time, we humbly request the love, support, and protection in receiving this blessing. To bless everyone watching this live and the recording. To help us know the wisdom that soul is the boss. And whether you choose to chant mantras, trace calligraphy, there is a way to self-clear karma. That's appropriate. Blessing begins. Kai Falling liberating you to meet the self-master inside 
each and every single one of us. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. Now, this is definitely perfect time. That's how you look at it every time. So, I guess this calligraphy really wanted to make an appearance. Make sure to get my attention. So, each of the 10 da comes with a Dao calligraphy, and you can go on to Master Shah's website and buy calligraphy cards. And um, I also write these and I, I've never sold these before except for a fundraiser. And this particular one says, da qian bei. I guess it wants to offer you a blessing. So we'll like, do another blessing. So da qian bei is to help transform unworthiness and arrogance right so the ego likes to compare oh i'm not as good as that person or you know goes into judgment competition and or it, you could be arrogant oh i'm better than that person okay so whether you feel unworthy or arrogant they both come from the ego so i guess we'll offer this blessing also Okay, so everybody say your name to heaven silently three times. So go close your eyes, put one hand on your heart and abdomen and Jay, if you can do a reading for us. So after you say your name silently to heaven three times, make a request. It could be about arrogance, unworthiness, judgment, competition, comparison. What is it that's the negative blockage that you are ready to let go and receive the greatest humility? Humility means we are one. I'm not better. I'm not worse. I'm perfect and you're perfect and we're just all perfect expression of the Tao or creation of the universe as appropriate. <laughs> humility to come into your vibrational field healing any unworthiness arrogance judgment competition comparison jealousy
How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. Well, thank you, Calligraphy, for making a special loud and clear announcement that he wants to uh, make an appearance. You want to give a reading? Sure. Okay. So, you want to? Um, so, they just go on camera. Okay. Um, so, when, I, when she started doing a blessing, I started to see purple light coming through. Um, well, two two things: purple light coming down, but also the 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 sound of her of her voice was going deep into my our ears, and the purple light came came down, opening the heart. So it was sort of like a fountain, like this, and then down into the second chakra to kind of open the heart, open the second chakra. It's really beautiful, and then it settled at the end during the silent blessing here. Thank you. So, and um, the the reason that this is happening is because, you know, the ego is like the thinking mind, right? So there's this Chinese martial arts practice. It says Yisho, Dantian. What it really means is guard your mind in your Dantian. So Dantian is located below the belly button right so every time you have a thought you know just breathe that down into your dantian and you know just let it go let it go let it go okay so i am going to share screen again thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve okay ready to grow Shadow work is the greatest gift any human being can offer themselves, their parents, significant other, children, friends, and community. So there are three steps. Step number one is join our free online community. Okay, so the blessing that you just experienced, I literally do it once a week for free and it comes out every Wednesday called Wholesome Wednesday. So if you follow this online community, it is absolutely free. Okay, and um, the URL mindfulhealingheart.com slash community, you'll get a link to join this. So yeah, once a week, there's a free healing. And step two is I generate tons and tons of free content on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So specifically, even if you don't have money to buy my book, there is each of the shadow, I have this um, 10 TV series is on YouTube. So it's called Journey. And so if you follow Mindful Healing Heart on YouTube, you'll be able to watch this 10 episode TV absolutely free. In fact, I am manifesting a TEDx talk called Moving Through Trauma with $100 or less. So I really am committed to delivering healing to as many people as possible at the lowest possible cost. That being said, I also recognize the value of a closed container where I get to personally mentor you and work with you and also have lots of wonderful guests like Swan. So I hope very much that you will join me on this 11 week journey of self-discovery. It's in person and on Zoom, where we get to share, laugh, cry, and scream, yes, so we can accept, release, bless each other, and learn from each other. It's going to be a very sacred vortex of all the participants' magic, and get this. Well, uh, okay, I'm going to put this somewhere else so that everybody can see. Okay, so every week, like today, I bring in one of my friends so that it's just not just Winnie talking, 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 but we really truly get to experience healing at all the different modalities. And that's the other thing is that a lot of these healers are also, they get the course for free. So I hope they attend every week. And so really, we're really holding down the fort with a very powerful vortex of healer energy. So we get to discover the blockages as a community and transform into our original essence. Who is this journey for? It's really for anyone who wants to heal, but especially anybody who wants to feel whole, 
Okay, if you want to be a better lover, a better parent, a better teacher or better healer, this is for you. You know, if you're a talk therapist, you're a Reiki healer, you really want to take yourself to the next level. This is it. And because I love you so much, just for referring your friends to join the online community, we and all they get to do is watch really weekly free videos, um, refer X number of friends to get a free session with me. It's a total soul, heart, mind, energy, and body experience, right? So at the soul level, you get literally transmission and download into your vibrational field. And we're going to practice listening to each other, right? Because Brene Brown says shame cannot survive empathy. And we're going to do some mindset shifting and some of these slides present science. You know, these are books and authors that have these proven techniques of shifting out of our conversations. And of course, most importantly, we want to have fun. So we're going to get our bodies moving with yoga, dancing, qigong. So because I love you, and just in case you don't continue with the course, please take your phone. I'm going to tell you everything you can do, even if you can't afford my course. So book number one is Byron Katie's A Mind at Home with Itself. This is basically a loose interpretation or adaptation of the Diamond Sutra. Why is it called a diamond? The diamond penetrates our illusion, okay? So it helps us see the emptiness of our suffering. Okay, so we get to loosen our attachment to the labels, me, you, the roles of being a bully, a victim, a rescuer, and also our stories, right? Our anger, our dualistic thinking, right versus wrong. All right, and then this is another really key thing mindset shift. So Diana Miranda, she offers a program called Life Works Transformation, and I'm a huge fan. The reason is because most of us don't know what we don't know. Our blind spot is like 99%. And yet most of us are run by these unconscious scripts, right? Because most of our scripts are formed between zero and seven. And so think about it, like I'm just running on autopilot and I'm just getting triggered left and right. Well, when we practice some of these methods, we get to shift the conversation and get a different outcome. And of course we can do yoga. So the format is kind of like this, you know, um, we're gonna do 50% shadow work where we talk about our shadow and 50% light work, you know, downloads, yoga, transmission. You're going to leave every time feeling integrated, empowered, and authentic, and ready to fly with our newfound awareness and consciousness, and most importantly, grounded in our source power. Okay, so. Winnie Chan Wang is a mindfulness and traditional medicine expert international speaker, best-selling author, and a professor. So if you guys are looking for someone, seriously, at the bottom of my heart, if you're looking for someone to help you with any issues, Winnie is the person to go to. And honestly, I know a lot of healers. I'm a healer myself. Elizabeth Caraca, an expert TV contributor and a regular on CNN, CNNI, Fox News, Fox Nation, Business Rockstars, and iHeartRadio. She has been featured in print publications, New York Magazine, NASDAQ, Yahoo, and Entrepreneur says, Winnie is committed and passionate to her topic and always delivers. It is evident how much she loves and cares about people. She is an engaging storyteller who is both interactive and entertaining. Whole body wellness, and I, you should definitely work with Winnie. They're both so passionate and just obviously very talented and, and really care. Winnie provides her clients with an integrative approach to healing. Fantastic, dedicated, vulnerable woman. And she's, I'm a physician, I'm a, a kidney doctor, kidney specialist. And so I really admire how she just brings authenticity 
and her genuine spirit. She is a real deal. What I experience when I'm with Winnie is she's very strong. She's full of joy. My experience of Winnie is that she's just a peaceful, strong force. I'm an entrepreneur. I own multiple businesses. And um, I spend a lot of my time, you know, just kind of traveling, working, meeting with people, meeting with clients. That's the power of you. you. That's the power of God. And that's the power of communal just gatherings. When you're around some people that know what they're doing and know how to basically bring real energy movement within your body to like really transition to change things that are kind of happening internally within your energetic field, things like this happen. And this is like a testament that what I'm doing in, in this journey that I'm on with Winnie is literally fundamentally going to be a breakthrough, not just for my life, but for the lives of others around me. And I very, very thankful. So Shout out to Winnie. If you haven't seen her before, you have to try this out. It's unbelievable. She was just so amazing and so helpful. She's amazing with what she does, and I recommend her to everyone. And I just love her humor that she shares the stories. She's a really phenomenal teacher and a terrific person just to speak to. This is what shadow work is all about. We deal with our issues and make a 180 degree turn so that we can all live life to the fullest. Yay. I highly recommend that you join the Compassionate Transformation course because this will change your life. So all the sessions are recorded. So no worries if you're traveling and um, you can't make it. The course runs September 23rd through December 9th and meets on Friday in person and on Zoom. And what is the value of transforming conflict to harmony? So 11 deep dive sessions, removing blockages, clearing karma at the soul, heart, mind, energy, body level. One, 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 one. So it's just 101 per session. Improve your health, finances, and relationship. And wait, but we have a very special offer. So for 2222, in addition to the deep dive session, you get five private sessions with me and the other amazing co-facilitators, email tech support, midway completion check-in calls, and also a custom calligraphy. So that's not chosen by me. That's going to be by guidance. So whatever it is, you're going to bring home one of... Um, You can bring home one of these calligraphy. And if you don't live close by, I can mail one to you. And also a spiritual object that connects you to your source power. This is really special because I don't sell my calligraphy. Okay, and more importantly, because I love you, if your finances are tight, donate your time, okay? That's also one way to get access to this course. Donate your time, help build the compassionate transformation community, okay? So our vision is to integrate science and spiritual medicine. And I really believe that healing should be accessible to all. So if you don't got money, donate your time. Okay, so if you have any questions about the course, schedule a free 20-minute call, canly.com slash mindfulhealingheart. And I thank each and every one of you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you can turn on the beautiful camera so I can send you some love and really thank all of you. Any questions, anyone? Any feedback? Anybody want to come up and share? Here, Jay, you can share something. What did you experience in this class today? So when I got to class today, I was tired, cranky, and I had a headache. I didn't sleep very well last night. And now I feel energetic and not cranky, I feel kind of bouncy, and I feel really good. So I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Can you read the response? Of course. Yeah. Sorry, they were already up. 
Uh, Bianca says, thank you. Oh, wait, there we go. Thank you for that lovely blessing, Winnie. From Jason, Natalie says, truly beautiful. Thank you for the blessing. Lisa Piero says, I feel truly full of this blessing. Much gratitude. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Jason says, thank you, everyone. Thank you, presenters. Thank you, Winnie. David says, that was great. Wasn't sure how I feel about this over Zoom, LOL. Yeah, um, it, it delivers every time. I can say from experience, I took the, I've took, I went to every class in the 11 week course and um, it's really, it's really, it's a, it's a highlight of my week and it's really turning my life around. So I'm really grateful for this experience. Uh, Bianca says her heart is full and she wants to thank you. Anyone else want to share? Anybody else? Anybody here? Anybody live in the room that wants to say anything? Come on up, Swan. Um. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for this, uh, this opportunity, Winnie. And when you were singing the blessing, um, I just felt like uh, this big, beautiful blossoming, like a oh, petal opening, 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 opening in the heart space. And it was a beautiful, big purple mm -hmm. flower. So um, it was just really great to connect to the power of the heart, the power of love, and uh, feel that blossoming richness. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Mom. you. Okay, so thank you everyone. Um, you know my Instagram handle, Mindful Healing Heart, and you know my website is mindfulhealingheart.com and schedule a call. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and so um, I look forward to hearing from you. Bye. <laughs>